These towering machines are getting ever more powerful. Nowhere is that more on show than at this test center in northern Denmark. It is the latest and biggest turbines that they have, the prototypes. This is like seeing the testing, the future, right here. The largest, a staggering 280 meters high, has broken world records for the most power. And experts say they're only getting bigger. This race towards bigger and bigger turbine will continue for, for a while more. We are looking into the possibility of creating a new test center in Denmark and the design turbine we are designing for is 450 meters from ground to highest tip. By 2030, wind power could supply a fifth of the world's electricity. We need clean energy, but this green industry has a growing headache when it comes to waste. Turbines are built to withstand the forces of nature. They're flexible, light and super strong. But that's also where the problem lies. When they reach the end of life, they're really hard to recycle. While the steel in the towers can be reused, the massive blades are almost indestructible. And as older models are replaced, many get dumped in landfill. By 2050, there could be 43 million tonnes of redundant blades globally that need to be dealt with. It is problematic because we want the renewable energy to be truly sustainable. And if you have a waste material that goes to landfilling, it's not truly sustainable. It's a problem players have been scrambling to figure out. And we might now have some answers. There have been creative ways of reusing wind turbine blades, like this bike shed. They've even been repurposed for playgrounds, bridges and building cladding. But this won't really tackle the growing volumes. One immediate solution is to chop up and finally shred them. It's burned as fuel and used as an ingredient for cement production. This US plant has already handled more than 3,500 unwanted blades. Now turbine maker Siemens Gamesa has had a breakthrough of its own. It manufactures some of the world's biggest blades at its site here in Albor. And while this one looks like any other, it can be recycled. It all comes down to a resin called epoxy, which acts like a really strong superglue binding together the fiberglass. Usually, this is incredibly tough to break down, but not here. We changed something in the backbone of the chemistry. This blade tip has actually gone through our recycling process. And we'll just turn it around. Here, you can see all the different glass layers that were placed during the production of the blade and how they are separating from the blade. To do that, it needs to be soaked in a big bath of mild acetic acid. After a few hours and 80 degrees uh, Celsius, and then you get the result that you see here. So it's just like vinegar in a supermarket? Exactly, exactly like you would make pickles or descale your coffee pot. I can actually smell that. There is a scent of, um, of vinegar coming from the blade. This won't tackle today's waste, but when these blades retire, the materials could go into making other things. It could be furniture, suitcases, you could use it for surfboard manufacturing, okay. etc. Yeah. So, in general, <laughs> consumer goods. But not new turbines. Not as it is right now, uh, but I'm never going to say never. So far, only a small number have been installed, but they'll soon be used for bigger offshore projects here in Europe. this research lab at Aarhus University, scientists are taking a different approach. This was part of a wind turbine blade that was decommissioned. Basically put the chip in there and then we add uh, a catalyst. They've discovered a chemical process that gently breaks apart the components. Precise details are still under wraps, but it turns out it's relatively simple. These are the glass fibers which uh, kind of come apart a little bit. Um, yes, I can see those. Because they're not bound together anymore. So you can see it's very clearly separated into its yes. different components. That means the fibres and even that tough epoxy resin could be recovered and potentially reused. 
This has been quite remarkable. We thought that these materials were extremely strong and indestructible. Now we found a chemical process that can actually chew its way right through the epoxy. And in theory, it could work on all kinds of turbine blades already out there. What we find exciting is we're sort of the first to be able to do that. There are potentials in recycling such very tough materials, not only confined to the wind turbine industry, there's the aeronautic industry, uh, space industry, uh, cars. This technology still needs to make the leap from a test tube to the real world. But with new solutions on the table, perhaps this growing waste problem could be headed off before it gets too big.